Does it look like I've got three lenses, a microphone and a camera on me? But there you go, one lens, one camera, the CA7C2, nice compact. Another two lenses that I can switch out as and when I want to. And then also a microphone there to be able to just do simple little vlogs. In this video today, we are going to be talking about perhaps one of my favorite new systems that's out on the market at the moment. And that is this, the Remaster Slims. These kind of lenses have been gaining popularity recently because they allow your professional cameras to be really small. One to note here is the Dispo lenses, which are around about 60 quid, and they're literally just recycled disposable camera lenses that get put onto body caps. But the thing I find most attractive about this is the value proposition. For £329, you get the following things. A hard case and three lenses, a 21 millimeter, a 32 millimeter, and a 28 millimeter. And then ultimately, look at it. This size is perfect for everyday carry, especially since you're getting that full frame sensor in there. Now, what I'm gonna do here is actually talk about three things I really liked about the lens itself and the lenses it comes with, and also three things that I thought were just a little bit weird or didn't quite really work right for me. What a really decent price. And you get three of them in this kit. It's tempting, isn't it? Numero uno. It's very pocketable when it comes to this setup right here. And this is what I would say is make sure you have something like an A7C2. It will work with the normal A7 IV, but with the A7C2, because it's that nice like range form finder format, it just fits the size and fits in pockets that much easier. Number two, of course, is image quality. Here's the same shot taken in the same place at the different focal range. Starting with the 21, going to the 28, and then finishing with the 32. Here are all the lenses matched up next to each other on a closer focal length, and this is where we're gonna gauge the sharpness. So zooming in, you can tell that the lenses are pretty sharp for what they are. Again, this isn't a thousand pound lens, so you're not expecting craziness, but they are good. And then here is some creative shots that I took with the 21 millimeter showing kind of what you can really achieve out of it. And I was actually really happy with these photos. If I'm honest, the thing I think this really excels at is using it to shoot vlogs. Okay, I bring you sad news. Um, I don't really know how to tell you all this, but your, uh, your beloved uh, Stuart Lee Furbank, who usually does the vlogging, has, um, has left us. Um, he, he won't be returning. He did leave his kitchen, which is strange, but um, he has left us forever now, and I'm 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 in charge of all the vlogging. Um, so it, it is um, it is what it is. C can I help you with something? Uh, I don't know. What? I, I was just telling uh, everyone that you I'm like for you. Some camera, camera you're looking for camera equipment. No, I'm, I'm Furby. I'm not sure. You're Furby. Yeah. Oh my goodness. God, I thought Stuart was around then. Gosh, I could have gone wrong. Um, but yeah, here we are playing with some Samyang lenses. Have you done a video on this lens? I'm uh, doing it right now. I'm actually going to put this in the video. Is this the video? This is going to be in the video. This lens is genius. It's hard to vlog when you look at the screen and you're over there and you're over there and you're over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This lens is brilliant, okay? Samyang released a 21mm f3.5? Uh, it's f3.5. f3.5, but it is a pancake lens, well, interchangeable. Same price, the same price. For the, the, the price of this, you get three lenses. So brilliant. you get this, a 28 and a 35. Perfect. And you can, because it's so light and because you can fit such a small video setup in just your pocket, it's kind of really great for video. Can it do photos? It can. Can it do video? Yes. But there is a caveat. And just to kind of show you how you change the lens there as well, before I get distracted. So that's now locked in. You do that and you pull it out. So now you've got this really weird kind of like cavernous thing. And now it doesn't protect the sensor. So you need to make sure you're changing your lenses out in a area where it's not gonna be very dusty, which is what you should be doing anyway. And then you just slide that back in and then click it in. And there you go, you've got your 28 millimeter there. Before I mention number three on the good points, I just wanna talk about some of the weird and quirky things about this lens. Number one here is uh, there were some points where I wasn't actually able to turn my camera off because the lens seemed to have superseded the off function on my camera. This is purely driven by the fact that I was changing out the lenses whilst the camera was operating, but it was a very weird quirk in my opinion. 
Number two, of course, because this is pretty much a lens to take, yeah, take apart and put together, opening up the lens to the elements, which I feel like could put it in a little bit of danger here and there. Again, the reason why you would want to get this though is because you've got so much real option here. So it kind of supersedes itself in that retrospect, but it may be something that you worry about. If you are interested in this really awesome hybrid setup that I've used in the video, then make sure you have a look at this video, which covers the ECM, which might possibly be the best mic you can get for the Sony system. What I like about it, it has a bunch of different like modes here. I've actually done a video on it before, so link here. Now for me, with somebody that does a lot of camera gear reviews, right? It's a bit annoying to be able to hold up like a heavy, like heavy-ish like lens, you know, up here to shoot me. For example, like a zoom, like a 1635. Now I can do it, but with this, it's like literally I can throw this then in my pocket without necessarily needing to, you know, clip it in anywhere or do anything else with it. It's it's awesome. It's really quite cool, and the photo quality on it is decent as well. The last issue that I had with it is when changing out the lenses. Sometimes it would I would have to take off the lens, put it, click it back on, and then it would start working. Again, when it comes to these weird issues that I had with the lens, this is purely stuff that will probably get fixed with software updates and is probably fixed now, but it's stuff that I counted. Anyway, does this affect how much I actually enjoyed using the lens and how much I would ultimately recommend them? No, it doesn't because of the last reason why I really liked these lenses, and that is because of the potential of what could come in the future, but also the potential of this setup. Overall, this is something that I am actually going to buy because I was that impressed with it, personally. If you are interested in it, make sure you hit the link in down below. My conclusion is they aren't the sharpest lenses in the world, but for the price of one lens, you get three lenses that are compact, really great when it can, when paired up with something like an A7C II um, or an A7CR, and they're just really powerful. I just can't, they're just cool. It's really cool. I like it. Um, yeah. If you like this video make sure you like follow subscribe if you want to see more have a good day like in fact it comes with a hard case as well it comes with a hard it comes with a hard case favorite lens of the year but my personal kind of like favorite lens idea let's call it idea remaster slim is brilliant don't like the font, if I'm honest, it's kind of a bit meh. But like, overall, if I was to choose a kind of like day-to-day you know, -day fun thing to shoot with, boom, sorted, done.